thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and my channel is Your True Shelf. And today I am doing a little bit about some statistics of the first um, six months of the year for reading. And also I'm doing the uh, mid-year book freak out tag, which everyone's doing and I'm enjoying watching everybody's um, replies to the questions. I film on my phone, I don't have a camera, so I'm going to do a cutaway in a minute to um, a screen recording of my phone so you can go through and see the statistics of what I've read this year and then um, I have written down my questions and my answers because I can't look at my phone while I'm recording. So this is my reading statistics for this year and I'm using Storygraph which is definitely my favourite app to use for tracking my reading. So as you can see here my reading goal for the year was 100 books and I've so far read 53 books this year um, so I'm already ahead which is really good news and that's the most books I will have ever read in a year most of the time. I think the most I got to was last year I think 97. So looking at the books that I've read so I'm just going to have to turn my screen around you can see that um, most of the books that I've read have been emotional, reflective, dark and mysterious and some adventurous and the least ones I've read are sad, tense and funny, which doesn't really surprise me. The pace of the books I have read, um, mostly medium pace, 50%, 37% slow pace and 13% fast pace. I'm a bit surprised, I thought I would have read more slow pace books than that, but, but you know. Um, page numbers, so the most books that I've read have been 300 to 499 pages. I've read a few 500 plus, let's have a look which ones those were. So those ones are Tess of the D'Urbervilles, The Poisonwood Bible and Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. And most, 38% so have been less than 300 pages. And fiction versus non-fiction, so 83% fiction and 17% non-fiction. I normally read more non-fiction than I have this year, I think. I think I've just been particularly drawn to fiction at the moment. And then looking at my most, um, most read genres, so I've got contemporary literary historical, which I was quite surprised by, but when you look at the books, I don't really count a lot of these as historical. So um, if I just show you the books that I've got, like I don't, I think like I really wouldn't count Milkman by Anna Burns as historical I wouldn't really count Opal and Never as historical um, I guess I wouldn't probably count Creatures of Passage as historical so I'm not sure quite about all of the all of the um, genre classifications on here um, and then LGBTQ books and romance is my top five and then down at the bottom autobiography which um yeah, crime, I'm not a big crime fan. Health, that's that's quite surprising. I'd have thought there'd be more about health. Um, horror, I'm not a big horror fan. Or philosophy. So yeah, I can kind of see, um, I can kind of see this here, but i say that's fairly typical. Um, and then the format, so mostly by far print books, 13% audio, 9% digital. My only author I've read more than one book from is Alice Oseman because I read Heartstopper and Loveless. I don't find this one particularly helpful because obviously, we, well, I don't know what quite what happened in February, but I've been fairly consistent with my reading, which is which is good. Star rating, so my average is 4.19. I am quite generous, I think, with my star ratings and I was going to do another video discussion about that at some point. Um... And that's, that's it for the statistics. So looking at this, my lowest value book was Pine by Francine Toon. And then you can see my five star book. I'll just scroll through these so you can see which books I've given five stars to so far this year.
So question number one is what is the first... That's not question number one. Question number one is what is the best book that you've read so far this year? So a lot of these books I don't actually have physically with me, so I'm going to insert pictures. Um, the best book I think today that I have read this year is The Wolf Down by Elodie Harper. This is a book that I got read on the recommendation of Louise Savage Muses. And um, it's set in Pompeii and it's about a group of women who have been sold into slavery and this basically involves being um, uh, sex workers against their will. And it's about Amara, who's our protagonist, and the group of women that she lives with in a place called the Wolf Den. And it's just amazing. Like, it is a hard read. I listened to it on audio. Um, but it really evokes the, the senses. So, like, you can really see what it looked like, smell what it, look, what it smelled like, um, taste the food... Um, visualize the places the characters are so well fleshed out and it, it, it evokes like that time like so well um, and there's a sequel which is out now and I can't wait to read the sequel um, so that is so far the best book of the year um, unless you ask me on a different day and I might give you a slightly different answer question number two is the best sequel and this is not applicable as I haven't read any sequels this year so I'm a great one for starting series and I am not very good at completing series, not because I don't want to, but I'm not somebody who can read like a book one and then go straight into book two and book three. I have to like have a little break, but then if I have too long a break, then I think, oh, I can't remember everything that happened. So yeah, it's not an ideal situation, but I've got loads of series on the go and I would really like to read some of the sequels this year. Question number three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. So for this one, let me just put my cup of tea down. So this kind of fits in with what I just said. So I bought um, The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwyn. This is the second in the Bloodsworn um, trilogy and this book came out a few months ago. I read book one this year. I think it was earlier this year and um, which was the shadow of the gods and um i am really looking forward to reading this so this is um a sequel that i'm going to read this year and then um two other books that i well one of these i bought recently which is um black cake by charmaine wilkerson which i spoke about in my last haul video and also uh i've got on my audible wish list um people person by candice carty williams because I loved Queenie and the people person is her newest release and I'm really looking forward to that. Question number four, your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So I'm a person who doesn't really know what's going to come out. I don't get like publishers catalogues. I don't particularly um, look out for what's coming. But the things that I'm looking forward to this year, definitely the sequel to The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. And that is called The House of Fortune. Um, I absolutely loved The Miniaturist and don't you find like a lot of books, you really like them and then as time goes by you can't really remember too much about the, the names of the characters or you know bits of the details of the books disappear but The Miniaturist hasn't for me, like I can remember the characters' names, I can remember what happened and I just loved that book, I really loved it and um, I can't wait for the second one to come out. And that comes out I think I know it's available for a pre-order at the moment. I think it's imminent, very imminent that it's coming out this month maybe. Um, and the other one which I've just thought of is the next um, the next book in the Nevermore series should come out this year. So the Morrigan Crow series. So book four should come out this year. I've read books one, two and three. They normally come out around October every year because I get them around my birthday. But last October there wasn't a book and I think it's due to come out later this year. But I found that series just gets better and better. So the next question is, um, your biggest disappointment? Now this is going to be an unpopular answer. So I went with, read this book um, thinking I was going to absolutely love it because I hear so many people talk about how much they love it and I really didn't like it very much at all and that is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I'm really sorry if you love this book but I just, everyone really likes it. I think I'm the only person I know who doesn't really like it and I was really disappointed because... I bought it thinking oh, I'm going to love this book and then I did not. Then we have Biggest Surprise. So for that one, I chose 
Tess of the Derby was by Thomas Hardy because I thought that this book is the one that had been on my TBR for the longest. I thought it was going to be a really difficult read. I thought I was going to read it really slowly. Um, I thought I'd probably enjoy it, but it would be hard work. And it was completely the opposite. This was one of the best books of the year that I've read. It wasn't hard to read. It was very emotional. Very like, I loved Tess. I got really invested in her and her story. And I thought this was an absolutely brilliant book. And so this is probably my biggest surprise of the year. My favourite new author. So I haven't, the only author that I've read two books from this year is, um... Alice Oseman and I wouldn't say yet that she's a favourite new author but the ones that I thought about so one is Meg Mason because I loved Sorrow and Bliss so much and I've just bought her her other book which is um, You Be Mother um, Jennifer Niven so she wrote All the Bright Places which is um, a YA book about two teens one dealing with grief and one dealing with bipolar disorder and this was a fantastic book, and I'd really like to read more of Jennifer Niven's work. Um, then I had Anna Burns, who wrote Milkman. I absolutely adored Milkman, and I thought it was wonderful. Um, I don't know. I'm sure Anna Burns must have other books. I don't think this is her first book. Let's just see in the front if it tells me. So she's written three books prior to this one, so I need to read more by Anna Burns because this was wonderful. And then the last one um, was V.E. Schwab. So I read my first V.E. Schwab this year, which was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I really enjoyed that and I'd really like to read more by V.E. Schwab as well. Um, I don't know if I can call any of them favourite authors yet because I've only read one of their books, but um, they're, they're kind of the contenders for this year. My newest fictional crush so I had two answers for this so I know a lot of people go that they don't get fictional crushes I do get fictional crushes so um I can answer this question so the first one is from A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J Maas and it is Tamlin who is a fairy and he is um he has taken uh Feyre prisoner and they end up having like a love story and I just liked Tamlin I thought he sounded like really hot and I liked him and then the other one that I had was oh yeah Jonah from Paper Palace so Paper Palace was by um Miranda Cowley Heller it was a really really good book definitely in my top books of the year so far um which was long listed for the women's prize but sadly not shortlisted and Jonah is one of the main um characters in the book um that the protagonist is having an affair with and um yeah hot liked him oh I missed one I missed another crush people we meet on vacation by Emily Henry that's her second book um Alex is the protagonist from or the male protagonist from um that book and uh he was, yeah, he was a really nice person. There was a lot of talk about his athletic body and um, he just seemed like a good guy as well. So him, him too. Um, newest favourite character? So I would say, not as in like I want to be friends with this character, but my favourite character who, who I think evoked the most emotion for me from all the books that I read was probably um, Martha from Sorrow and Bliss because... Martha is not a really likeable character, but she's such a well crafted character and she's so funny. And I really liked her sister as well, actually. And I think Martha probably got the biggest reaction from me of all of the characters that I've read in the last six months. A book that made me cry. I would say, no, it's rare for a book to actually make me like physically cry. Um, there are books that have made me cry, but I don't think anything's really made me cry this year. But made me emotionally upset, I would say. The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara King Silver. There are a lot of difficult things that happen in this book. You get super invested in the characters. You have like real feelings for the characters. And um, when things happen to them, it's like this book just this book just made me like very emotional so this is one um another one would be i need to bring my list closer so i'm not constantly looking over that um 
Oh, Letters on Motherhood by Giovanna Fletcher. So I've given that away now, but um, that was a really beautiful book and that was really touching. Um, it's just her letters to different people and things in her life about being a mum. And that was a really emotional book, really touching. And then Tess of the D'Urbervilles, um, because of certain things that happened in the book, which I can't say because there'd be massive spoilers. And <clears throat> a book that made me happy, I would say the book that made me really happy this year would be Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I seem to talk about Heartstopper in every single, every single video recently, but this book is a graphic novel, which I'm sure everyone's probably read already, and um, it's a black and white graphic novel, a uh, queer love story between Nick and Charlie, who are uh, um, school age kids, um, teenagers, and um, I absolutely loved it. Made me so happy, couldn't wait to read it. The most beautiful book that I bought or received. So I would say, looking through, there's two. One of them is Heidi by Joanna Spirey, which is a naked hardback. Um, that is just absolutely beautiful and it's got nice end papers as well. Um, so I really love that book. But then also I love the cover of On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. I love the colour scheme and it's quite a quite a simple cover but it's just really beautiful. There's tiny little bits of silver foiling. I love the orange and the blue and the leaves and I just think that's very... The book is gorgeous as well as the title. And what do I need to read by the end of the year? Well, nothing particularly. I don't need to read anything. The only things I sort of commit to reading are my book club books or anybody reads that I um, agree to do. Uh, but I would say some next in the series books because as I mentioned before, I'm a great one for starting series and I need to be a bit more of a completer with my series. I've got a list in my bullet journal of all my series and I kind of colour the books in as I read them, but yes. I'd like, actually, yeah, that's another thing, my bullet journal challenges, I'd like to read more of my favourite booktubers favourite books. Um, TBR Vets, so the things that have been on my TBR for the longest, so Tess was the longest book which I have read, but there are others which have been on there for a lot of years, which I do still want to read and I need to kind of, you know, prioritise those ones. And then my library books, as, as previously seen, my library books have kind of got a little bit out of control. Um, I have read one library book so far this month I have unhauled two because I've requested the audible no I've bought, bought the audible for one and the other one I've requested from Libby so I've kind of got rid of three but still I need to ramp up the library book reading. The last one is favourite book to movie adaptation I would say two. One I've already mentioned this All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven which has a fantastic um to adaptation, film adaptation with um, Elle Fanning, which is really good. And also, of course, of course, Heartstopper TV adaptation on Netflix. Absolutely divine. Loved it. So that's my list of the all the books mentioned in the tag. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to leave any of your answers um, in the comments that would be really good if you've done one of these videos then please link it in the comments so that I can go and watch it as well and um, I hope you enjoy the answers and the statistics and I hope you've all had a wonderful uh, reading year so far and that it gets even better for the rest of the year take care see you soon bye